I'm going to start recording right now just so we've got it all here. Do, 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 do. Yep. And I'm recording it locally so that way we save time. Um, I don't have to download it out of the cloud. Yeah. So that's good. Yeah. Cool. Oh, so thank you. good to meet you. Great. great. Yeah. And uh, uh, thank you for inviting me for this uh, podcast. I'm very sure. happy. Excellent. Yeah. And and we, we both think alike because you are talking about employee engagement, uh, leadership, and uh, you connect the dots and you are a continuous learner. So all these things uh, resonates with my thinking. Mm -hmm. Oh, good. I'm all glad all are it's, it's a kind of team, team spirit. Right. Exactly. Yeah. 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 yeah very much so. Yeah. Um, the, the way that I start the pot. So when I do the podcast, I always record um, an intro after the uh, podcast is done. Uh, right? Separate. I just record a little short separate video and, and then edit them together. Um, okay. But so the, but the first question that I ask guests on the podcast is always like, how did you get started thinking about or acting about leadership uh, it's it's the origin story like what's your starting point uh, could you repeat that question yes yeah so what is it that got you started thinking about how to do leadership well yeah uh, oh thank you uh, I, i'm basically passionate about uh, leadership and and uh, I am an Indian Air Force veteran. I served in the Indian military for uh, 12 years. So I'm passionate about leadership, basically. That's one thing. So the uh, I think that the, I get that you serve time in the, in the military and that has you be passionate, but what what's the starting point? When did you start to really think about leadership? Because I wasn't born thinking about leadership. You know, for me, it was, it was a requirement to really think about it to be effective when I was given my first software team to lead or told to build my first software team. No. Um, I'm always curious where other people, like what's the starting point? When did you first start to really think about effective leadership? Well, oh, it's a great question. So, uh, uh, right from my building, uh, right from the uh, uh, beginning, so I started uh, admiring Abraham Lincoln. Abraham Lincoln has been my inspiration since my childhood. Oh, and okay. I, Abraham I Lincoln. To, I used to go to far distant places uh, to visit the libraries. Uh, and uh, the first person who came to my mind was uh, Abraham Lincoln. I didn't know much about Abraham Lincoln. Uh, and uh, the letter was very unique and uh, I went to the library. I used to go to library uh, by, by a walk, sometimes uh, by pedaling the cycle. I used to go to library because in those days, uh, we didn't have technology. Sure. So I visited a library in my life uh, by walk. I went to a library. Uh, then I saw one person that is uh, Abraham Lincoln. Then that that has gone to my mind. And subsequently, I came to know about Abraham Lincoln. That's how the idea of leadership has uh, uh, flashed on my mind. And Abraham Lincoln has been my inspiration since my childhood. That's one thing. That's and and uh, subsequently, I joined Indian Air Force. And uh, for 12 years, I was uh, uh, in my native place. And I had a very... Uh, chaotic uh, childhood and uh, I was born into a toxic family and grew up in a toxic environment. I had lots of challenges and luckily I joined Indian Air Force and I grew as a healthy citizen and I grew as a leader. Then, and uh, when I was into Indian Air Force, then uh, I, I started reading about uh, various leaders like Abraham Lincoln, George Washington, some leaders like Mahatma Gandhi, uh, Nelson Mandela, mm -hmm. Aung San Suu Kyi, His Holiness Dalai Lama, uh, 
and Martin Luther King. So I started uh, reading about them. So I got more inspired. And I'm basically dyslexic and uh, I have OCD uh, and uh, uh, I'm a late, late bloomer. And uh, add to that, the, I had a brain stroke in the year mm -hmm. 2021. So despite all the challenges, I kept learning and uh, growing uh, because basically I'm very curious by nature and I'm very creative by nature. So this is how the leadership has flashed on my mind. And not only through the books and in my real life. So I practiced. I am both a, a, a scholar and also a, a, a practitioner. Scholar means I am a doctorate. Uh, I earned my PhD. Uh, and that is I am a scholar. Apart from that, I am a practitioner. Because I travel different uh, areas in my life. First, Indian Air Force. That was military. Mm -hmm. Second, I was an entrepreneur, which did work out. Third, uh, I became a faculty member and became a professor. Then I became an author. Uh, so like that, I traveled my journey in different areas. Then for the last 17 years, I am uh, writing research papers and, and I published uh, 300 uh, research papers in my lifetime. And uh, I serve on the editorial board of uh, DLO of Emerald and JBPL and various other uh, boards I am uh, serving. And uh, within a span of uh, 17 years, I published 53 books. And I published, uh, uh, I authored 60, but published only 53 because seven books are still pending. And uh, mm -hmm. due to health challenges, uh, COVID has struck. For the last three and a half years, I have health challenges so i, I don't uh, i can't edit and update uh, up, upgrade my uh, books this is how the journey about uh, leadership has begun and mm -hmm. uh, then again what i did was uh, i earned my phd in soft skills in the year 2011 and uh, passion i'm passionate about leadership then i acquired my phd in soft skills i blended both uh, soft skills with leadership and point a new leadership perspective that is known as uh, 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 soft soft leadership and in, innovative perspective. That's what I started. And uh, I published around 10 books on uh, soft leadership and soft leadership. Wow. And uh, yeah. And again, what happened? My journey has not stopped. There are, uh, there is some uniqueness about this soft leadership. Uh, and uh, I, uh, and uh, uh, I have dedicated the book titled uh, um, Soft Leadership, New Direction to Leadership to uh, 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 Peter Drucker, who is known as Father of Model Management. That's one aspect. Second thing is uh, the Father of Modern Marketing, uh, Philip Kotler, who is my friend. He has, uh, 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 he has written a foreword for my book titled uh, 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 Soft Leadership, a New Direction to Leadership. Third aspect is that uh, the father of modern HR, uh, De Allrich, has created a leadership code uh, for uh, 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 this uh, book. And fourth aspect is that uh, I am known as soft leadership globally because of my contribution in the area of uh, soft leadership. So because of these four unique aspects, I am known as father of soft leadership and I published lots of research papers and I am still doing some kind of research uh, research research and uh, and i'm integrating soft leadership with uh, employee engagement uh, 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 integrating with the humanity uh, and i'm integrating with uh, uh, empathy uh, then various uh, aspects i'm and also uh, emotional intelligence all these things i'm integrating i'm doing research and i want to discover something new to impact humankind so this is briefly about uh, my leadership journey and also about my books Cool. Okay. Awesome. Um, I'm always curious about philosophical perspectives in action, right? Uh, like, mm -hmm. like, can you give me an example of a, of a, of a time when you've used your approach in a challenging environment uh, to, to, to really field test the uh, idea versus the reality of the world? Yeah. In the sense, could you repeat this question? Please? Sure. So, so, so you've got this this construct, soft leadership, for how to do leadership effectively, right? right. 
And the thing that I'm always curious about is what are the case studies where Uh people have taken that idea and they've put it into action and they've seen what happens, right? I'm I'm always curious about how does it work in action and how do other people repeat that same kind of a thing, right? I, what, how does this, an example of the system in, in use? Yeah, that's good. Great question. You have asked it and thank you for uh, paraphrasing uh, mm-hmm. your question. And I'm grateful to you for uh, helping me uh, yeah. because basically I had a brain stroke. So I'm speaking slowly. So please empathize with me. So now coming to this uh, question, uh, the soft leadership basically a theoretical one. And uh, it's uh, it's basically a, a, a about scholarly approach, but we can uh, 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 implement uh, soft leadership in various uh, areas. For example, the soft leadership helps achieve peace and prosperity for uh, countries. The soft leadership helps uh, organizations achieve uh, uh, effectiveness and excellence. The soft leadership is. Uh, uh, useful for uh, all generations, whether they are uh, uh, baby boomers, Generation X, Generation Y, Generation Z. And uh, the soft leadership is, is useful and uh, in the practical life uh, and uh, uh, it helps uh, in view of uh, technology and artificial intelligence. So this is very much required. This is very much relevant. And uh, still I'm doing research, as I said. And uh, we need to uh, we need to work uh, in such a way that uh, we impact humankind and for that we need to integrate technology with this and again we have to integrate uh, teams we need to work in teams because nowadays people uh, we talk so many things uh, that's different but in reality uh, 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 alignment is, is the key uh, alignment is missing in the teams in the workplace, everywhere. So we need to uh, emphasize alignment uh, so that we will be able to uh, uh, engage uh, employees and we can uh, inspire them. So, so these are all the things. Then we need to connect with the uh, corporate culture and we should have a, uh, what that called, uh, 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 what that called, organizational, uh, we have to emphasize an organizational culture and organizational uh, climate, all these things, when we integrate, we'll be able to get the desired uh, desired outcomes. Okay, so right now, the stuff that you're talking about is all about the benefit, right? Yeah. You're talking about the benefit. What I'm really curious about, I'm always curious about the, the nitty gritty in action, what does it look like, right? And, you know, for... for Whenever people talk about systems, and I think yeah. what you're describing is a system, yeah. But what I want to know is, and this is, you know, for anything, right? You know, um, is when has it been in action, and when has somebody used it? You know, if, if you're doing research, then you've got a hypothesis, and you're trying an experiment, right? And yeah, so, what's it. the experiment versus the control? Yeah. Um, cause you know, I mean, I, I, I've, I've spent a lot of years doing experiments, um, around leadership to see what's going to be effective, what's going to be more effective. And along the way I learned what didn't work, right. Some of those, some, a bunch of my experiments failed, mm. um, cause that's the scientific method, right? Yeah. Correct. So when you're talking about the benefits you know, I want to drop down a layer and go to, okay, so give me an example of somebody using this, what the problem was when they started, how they implemented and what they did, and then what's the outcome? And and what were the pieces in the middle that allowed it to work effectively? Yeah. Okay. Great question. I got your question. So I would like to put in this perspective. I worked in the Indian Air Force and practically I worked let us keep let us uh, let us keep the theoretical aspect and uh, scholarly uh, ap- approach different so let me talk about my own uh, uh, experiences from indian air force because i served yeah. in indian air force that's military i served so we, we worked in uh, in the indian air force and which is a military organization 
and uh, and i worked as a technician and mm -hmm. uh, and uh, the role of uh, te technician is uh, very challenging in the indian air force and uh, what we would do you know sometimes uh, uh, employees lacked uh, uh, motivation so we encouraged the uh, em uh, employees and uh, we have motivated them that's one thing and whenever we were doing some activities and uh, we uh, since as a, i was a technician in the aeroplanes so i worked with teams and uh, uh, there were some uh, mismatch between the reality uh, and uh, theory so we try to bridge the gap between theory and uh, practical and we kept uh, moving so mm -hmm. these are all my observations i experienced in the indian air force and uh, lots of stories are, are there uh, to talk about uh, uh, my journey uh, of leadership uh, especially from the perspective of a technician and what we what we did uh, in the indian air force was that we we try uh, we worked with the technicians and uh, and we do uh, technical as stuff everything we used to do that then again we, we find some uh, misalignments we removed the misalignments then again we uh, aligned and we kept moving sometimes the things don't work out in uh, uh, practical life so what we do again we go for uh, 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 repeat, we do we do the same thing we repeat and we, we ensure that things are falling into the place that's what we do it because uh, this misalignment is the challenge uh, whether it's indian air force or uh, organizations whatever it is i think you worked in i think if i believe you worked in google and you worked in some other companies right yep. so everywhere yep. you we find some challenges yep uh, and Always. we need to remove the barriers and we have to align the things alignment is the key so uh, we have to uh, align the things uh, which is easier said than done so team building is not a, a an easy thing it's a very challenging one and i have experienced uh, in my own life and let me share uh, one aspect uh, which we can learn uh, from the nature uh, see uh, birds fly in v, v v formation right mm -hmm. why they fly in v formation because uh, they increase the speed by 51% uh, and they minimize the drag so that the reason why the birds fly in uh, uh, v formation right and we can learn from not only from technician because i was a technician that's one thing keeping my technical perspective and scholarly perspective uh, away i will talk about uh, from the perspective of nature birds they work in teams and one of the birds uh, uh, when when uh, birds fly in v formation uh, uh, one or two birds if they they are sick or if they are falling down or uh, dead so all uh, the the words that are uh, dead and uh, that, uh, that that are sick then we will support them then again we uh, get into the v formation that's what we do it similarly in military also if, uh, if for example 100 soldiers were there i was also one of the soldiers if one of the soldiers was uh, had uh, some health challenges or problems we would uh, support all soldiers and we will revive the uh, 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 we support the uh, soldier, then we will make him uh, healthy, then again we work. So we work in a team. It's not only in the Indian Air Force, but in, in the, from the nature. So uh, we have to uh, tell this, these things from the practical perspective. One is practical perspective. Second is uh, from the perspective of nature. Then third, I told you about the books and uh, scholarly approach. So all those things I am integrating right now. So that you will you will have the feel of that discussion. Okay. Um, is there anything within your system, um, like when you break it down, what are the kinds of individual steps that people are are learning to be effective with this? See. You. We have to, there are so many strategies. We have to break the problem into pieces. Uh, then we have to address each problem. 
break uh, we have multiple problems let us suppose let us take one problem let us suppose that problem we will try to divide into multiple uh, layers and we will try to address them then again we will integrate them and then we will bring out the desired uh, uh, result that's what we do it in the sense we need to break the problem and we have to address each uh, minute part of the problem then we have to integrate uh, then we we come with a viable and feasible solution this is uh, uh, this is again related to uh, team building so mm-hmm. the message is very simple we have to break the problem into small minute parts and address them layers or whatever you call then we have to address them then again we have to integrate them and come, uh, come out with uh, a desired solution that's what is about okay yeah um is is there a do you do you have any kind of a you know from your research have you seen any standardized approaches uh, uh standardized approach means uh, so uh, so uh, i mean uh, your question is uh, not clear standardized approach means about soft leadership we are talking or about team building or from which area you are talking about right so uh, f- well i tend to think of teams as a result of yeah. um of people operating well together yeah. and having um to your point they have an aligned a uh, set of goals right and and each yeah. each person has their own set of goals but the yeah. combination together is all going in the same direction um, yeah have are you seeing or what have you seen that have been um standard starting points that See, people- uh, uh, there is no uh a uh, standard approach for anything it's uh, a learning uh, it's about learn uh, learning curve life is all about learning curve, curve. we learn the things and uh, if we make mistakes and we will correct and we keep going that's what uh, we do it and uh, okay. uh, there is nothing like any fixed uh, standard uh, solution uh, about leadership or about uh, team building see people have different emotions you have to have uh, different people for different strokes ken blanchard talked about uh, different strokes for different people so people have different uh, emotions different uh, feelings egos so we have to uh, we have to address them then we have to keep moving and there is nothing like a very fixed approach and a fixed solution it's all about learning and uh, uh, trial and error method we we try keep doing if we if we fail then again we learn and we keep moving so it's a trial and error method there is nothing like a standard process but the ultimate object of any kind of leadership is to, is to get the end result how to achieve uh, how to improve the organizational bottom line that is the important whether you uh, approach for uh, x company or y company or z company whatever it is you have to improve the organizational Uh, bottom lines that is the target so the means are many but the end is one that is uh, improving the organizational bottom lines interesting that has not been my experience <laughs> yeah okay yeah. no yeah um because you have an experience i think you worked in if i if i believe you worked in google and one more yeah, company I've, you worked i've worked for a bunch i've worked for a bunch of different companies And yeah i know i know i know you started uh, uh, in a very young, very early stage and yeah. so uh, and you grow uh, and, uh, and you don't have that uh, you, you don't have any science science background or something that that but you learned by experience right and i, I also experience uh, i also learned that i could apply the same systems over and over again to teams in different contexts yeah and i got the same result like oh. i i found a structure yeah that consistently repeatedly worked with my teams yeah um that got me the outcomes that i wanted be, 
and I, humans are pattern recognition creatures. Yeah. And so for me, you know, I, I looked at the patterns of people that I'd worked with in the past, mm. and what were their systems and, you know, where'd they work really well and where didn't they work really well? Right. What were the lessons I could learn? And yeah. so for me, I'm a huge believer in leadership as a, as a system and you always do the exact same things because that, you know, that's, that's what I've been doing and I keep getting good results oh. and it allows me to teach other people yeah. how to replicate my results. And I've, you know, at this point in time, I've taught hundreds of people uh. and they've all been able to replicate my results. Yeah. And yeah, so I you know, to me, that's a, um, it's like learning math, right? Yeah. Yeah. Math said, has, math, yeah, math is a math, system, math. right? Uh, mm -hmm. And so, you know, right now you may look at adding three plus four as different than adding seven plus five, uh, but they're not, they're both addition and the yeah. operators are the same. Mm. And so math, irrespective of what the values are coming into the formula, it's very much a system because otherwise we couldn't globally answer mathematical questions. Right. Okay. And so that's how I think about leadership. And every time I research somebody who is an excellent leader, mm -hmm. they're following the same, the excellent ones. They very much follow the same kind of systems approach. Mm -hmm. um, and it might look different if you don't understand the formula, but once you understand the formulas in there, it's, it's always the same. Yeah. Okay. Uh, let me, let me talk about, uh, you, you talked about mathematical, uh, things and, uh, that, uh, that flashed on my mind. Uh, the thing is a plus B, uh, a, a square plus B square is equal to two AB. Okay. I think everybody knows it, right? It's a standardized uh, things, but in, in in real life and in leadership, there is flexibility. And what are the pattern you followed in the past? Sometimes the same pattern may not work now. It may not work in the future because things are changing very fast. And just because we 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 were successful in one particular pattern, and we should not come to a conclusion that we will be successful in the same way. So what we need to do, we have to oh, learn, unlearn, and relearn. Okay. So we have some mathematical form formula like four, uh, four plus uh, three means how much? It's uh, four, four plus three means seven, right? Seven. Yeah. It's a mathematical formula that uh, everybody talks, and that's correct. But in real life, it's not in that way, right? Uh, formula, that's not my formula, experience. Formulae are different, and reality are different. But we have to take the support of formulae. Right, but at the same time we have to be flexible and uh, you know to get the results. Because when we talk about leadership, it's not a fix, uh, it's not a fixed formula. So different okay, let's people have different up. ideas. Different. Let's back up a minute. How do you define leadership? Uh, leadership is uh, leadership means there are so many definitions. If you Google, you will get uh, lots of uh, hits about leadership. Leadership means what leading from the front adding value and making a difference in the lives of others. That's one way of definition. Okay. Then again, leadership means what you have to lead, uh, you have to uh, motivate people and build teams and you have to get the desired outcomes. Right. Mm -hmm. okay. So there are so many yeah. different differentiations about leadership and we can't say that there is any fixed uh, definition about leadership. Whereas four plus three means seven, you say that's correct. And a plus b whole, uh, a square plus b square is equal to two ab. That is a formula that we can't change it. E is equal to mc square. Einstein said that's fixed. That can't be changed, right? Uh, Einstein said so. That's a different aspect that I that we agree and we we follow those uh, uh, formulae. Apart from that, when we do things uh, in leadership, it's based on various uh, permutations and combinations. And uh, what worked uh, uh, in the past may not work now, what works now, 
it may not work in the future because things are changing very fast in view of the, the technology, especially in view of artificial intelligence. So we can't uh, come to a one particular conclusion uh, based on the particular pattern because everyone has a unique pattern and we follow it. But again, that that pa pattern we must to change with the changing times and technologies because what worked at that time may not work in now. Because you worked in some companies, uh, you worked in popular uh, companies like uh, mm -hmm. uh, some companies you worked, right? But I worked sure. only in Indian Air Force. That was my experience. Right, right. Uh, so like that, everyone has their own uh, uh, experiences. Everyone has a unique story. My story is different. Your story is different. Sure. Oh, okay. Everyone right. has a different story. Yeah. I'm part of my input. Yeah. Right. You talk about the Indian Air Force. Part of my input and the stuff that I learned comes from one of my mentors who spent a lot of years in the U.S. Air Force in their um, supply chain, um, right, for munitions. I see him. And and he had some really good insights on leadership that kind yeah. of set me at some foundational perspectives. Yeah. I have not found those to be wrong in any context. And I've, you know, I've, I've used them in technology. I've used them in race car teams. I saw them in action in college and you know, I worked in a really nice restaurant. Um, I, I saw them in action as a first responder. So aside from my tech career, there's lots of other places where I've seen these same patterns play out over and over again. Um, and they're abstracted patterns. They're not, they're, they're, um, they are, they're not one plus one equals two. They are, how does addition work kinds of patterns, yeah. right? And, and, and I fully get that there may be contexts where it won't work. Yeah. But definitely with the 80, 20 point, um, or maybe it's the 95, five, I'm seeing these things play out over and over and over again. Um, and I will freely admit that maybe it's because of the way my head's wired, right? Yeah. Because, you know, I've had different experiences. I've had different kinds of learning. Um, yeah. and I've, and, and, and I'm definitely a systems thinker, even mm -hmm. when I'm abstracting it from a high altitude. Yeah. Um, and I also recognize that for some people, they won't see the pattern that I see because they, they don't have the, um, the experience in the filter, right? Yeah. It's a practice thing. Yeah. Yeah. yeah uh, I agree with you. See, uh, every country and uh, every uh, area of uh, work has, ha ha uh, comes out with some unique uh, uh, story. Now you were talking about an uh, uh, officer uh, from uh, Air Force, I mean, Air military mm -hmm. from years. So that, that's kind of experience he en encountered. And I had a different kind of uh, experience. Sure. And now again, things have changed. Right. So things are changing so fast everywhere. And we can't stick to any particular pattern. But again, let me share with you one pattern. I wake up 4 o'clock right? And I create uh, my own uh, content. I create uh, so many things in my head. Then mm -hmm. I generate my content. Then I destroy unwanted uh, things from my mind. Precisely, I am the creator, I am the generator, and I am the destroyer. In the sense, this mm -hmm. is, I am wired to think in that way because I am from a military background. I wake up 4 o'clock every day, right? That's the pattern I'm having. I am sure. having. I can't, uh, I can't, uh, change my circadian uh, rhythm, right? But I have one flow. I go in that way. Four o'clock, I wake up. I'm very punctual, on time, and I keep doing it. That's the kind of pattern I am having. Still, I can't break that uh, pattern. Sure. So sometimes you should have one particular pattern. You have to stick to it. That's my schedule I'm having. Mm -hmm. But again, when we talk about organizations, it's different. It's flexible. We need to change. See, I was in, I was in India. Now I'm in US. Now I have to adjust with that uh, 
time zones different sure. time zones yep, yep. all those things it happens but right. although although at the basic core of my personality is same core of my personality character everything is same but little bit have changed at the surface level and we need to change that's what is required about uh, pattern so okay. you can't stick to any particular pattern but for certain things you have to stick to but you need to make some changes here and there superficially to get the desired uh, outcomes i agree with your point yeah okay yeah yeah i i'm uh i think that my patterns are very flexible yeah and, good and, good good you good. know and flexible you have to be flexible yeah correct. right and, and you're you're hitting the bullseye yeah, yeah. you're hitting the bullseye and, and, and the other thing is i've got lots of use cases of testing my patterns so i'll give uh -huh. you an example right uh -huh. I have found that if I can help the people on my team to achieve their career goals, yeah, I get better productivity. Yeah, got it. Right? And so mm -hmm. I ask them, like, I do one-on-ones with my team every week. Yeah. And the whole purpose of that is for them to complain to me. Yeah. Them to tell me what's wrong that's slowing down their ability to do good work. Yeah. I don't, I don't care what it is, mm -hmm. right? It's whatever their friction happens to be. And then I go figure out how to remove the friction. Yeah. Right. When I do that, they trust me more. Yeah. They work better. Yeah, correct. They have greater psychological safety. And oftentimes, Excellent. and oftentimes the friction is, oh, I'm doing yeah. this thing, but I want to be doing that thing. Yeah, correct. And I go, okay, great. Let's figure out how to make that happen. Right. Yeah. We've, you know, let's figure out how to adjust the team and get you moving in that direction. And I'm driving intrinsic motivation. Yeah. <laughs> and intrinsic so, and the eccentric motivation. Right. Yeah. So I'm driving, yeah. I'm always going, moving towards intrinsic motivation. Yeah. And that's a pattern. No. The tools that I use along the way are always the same tools. Mm. Because one of the tools is I've got to be patient mm -hmm. because they're not going to trust me on day one and give me their vulnerability. Yeah. And after 10 weeks, whatever it takes, then they trust me and they'll say, you know, I've been doing blah, blah, blah. I've been doing back end coding and now I want to do front end, but I don't know that much about front end. Okay, great. Awesome. Let's get you to learn about front end. Let's get you to start practicing. Let's pair program you with somebody else who does front end work. And let's figure out how to get the stuff you've been doing handled in some way by somebody else on the team, right? Let's figure out some progressive change to get that to happen. They, yeah. they love it, right? Mm -hmm. I test my hypothesis all the time in the real world, right? Good. Like good, good. I'm, I've got, I, I've, um, I am very much, uh, I'm very much driven to go find the proof of my theory. Yeah. And I keep seeing that if I remove friction, my team operates better. If I okay. help people go down the direction of their intrinsic motivation, the team operates better. Now I get that in a military environment where you've got an, uh, um, you've got a, an assigned kind of uh, role in an organization you might not have the flexibility to go do that. Yeah. I fully get it. But there's lots yeah. of other things that leadership in the military can do to make your life better. Yeah. Right. I've, I've heard lots of stories about things that, that um, my military mentor did to help people operate better. Right. Yeah. Um, and to remove their friction. Yeah. So, so I, I, you know, I'm getting this from very different kinds of environments. Um, yeah, and, and so I keep seeing this pattern over and over again, right? I keep experimenting with the pattern over and over again. Great, and the great. experiments, when they fail, and I start to really dig in, um, I, I find either A, um, somebody is completely not matched to what the business is trying to do. 
Um, and then I, if we can't get them aligned with the business, then I, I try to very compassionately move them out to someplace they're going to like, right? Um, or they need a coaching in a way that I haven't found before from them. Like they haven't, you know, like, and I need to figure out how do we make that happen, right? Or mm -hmm. they're in completely the wrong kind of role. You know, I, I had a... Um, I had a software engineer years ago who came to me and said, I'm not, I'm not happy doing this job anymore. And I was like, okay, well, what do you want to do? You know, like you're a great asset to the company. And he said, I, I don't really know. And I said, well, okay, look, we got a company full of people doing all these different jobs. Put a standing thing in your calendar that at three o'clock every Friday, you're going to go do research for two hours and go talk to people and the rest of the company go like every Friday, go do this, come back to me in six weeks. Tell me what you learned. And six weeks later, he came back and said, I think I might want to do sales. And I, I said, oh, okay. I, that was completely not what I was expecting, but great. Let me see if I can get you embedded with a sales team for a week and, and figure out how to get your work done, like get you there part-time, right? We made yeah. that happen. He came back and said, oh my God, I love it. And he moved to the sales team. We, we figure out how to make that happen. And the, the guy that ran the sales team came back to me a month later and said, this guy's amazing at sales. He's, you know, he's incredibly good. Thank you for giving him the shot, right? That, to me, that was a really smart thing to do because I got great performance out of him. And then the other team got great performance out of him, right? It's, and I've used that pattern, you know, for for 20 years, basically. Okay. Yeah. So let me uh, continue. This uh, we, we have to very we have to be very much uh, flexible in approach. See, for example, you want to get the desired outcomes. Always that should be the takeaway. How you get that through flexible approach? You there is nothing like uh, that. You know we have to go in this way only. There are different ways to get the things done because different sure. people have different. Uh, uh, Emotions, different people have different feelings, emotions, all those things, right? Mm -hmm. So we we have to manage emotions. We have to em uh, we have to manage egos. We have to em emos, uh, We have to manage uh, uh, feelings, all those things, so that we can build successful teams. Right, right. So that's one thing. So, but the approach must be very flexible. But the takeaway is that we should get the desired outcome, right? It could be sure, a pattern. Sure. Pattern. Yep. You have a specific pattern that you follow i respect it and everyone has their own uh, unique pattern but at the same time we need to take feedback from the <laughs> pattern pattern because if some of the things don't work out what happens we have to take feedback then we have to modify our patterns so we need mm -hmm. to take feedback right yeah, when we yeah. take feedback then we can improve our uh, decision making and we'll be able to get the desired the outcomes Right? right, this is one thing. So your pattern is based on the years of experience, right? Uh, I appreciate your uh, pattern, and I have my own pattern. I wake up morning four o'clock, night ten o'clock. I sleep. That is my pattern, mm. right? Mm -hmm. Yep, yep. So, so, so this I can't change it. Whether I'm US or uh, whether I'm in uh, uh, India, this is the pattern I follow. Not only now, for the last I think forty three years, I am having the same pattern. Uh, so many people said uh, you change, but I can't change because in the teenage I joined the military. So I was molded in that way. So I'm growing in that way only. So, mm, okay, that's right, right. I'm having. so everyone has uh, some unique pattern we need, we must respect. At the same time, we have to be flexible. For example, I moved from uh, uh, India to uh, Seattle, that is in US. So I had changed a little bit. All the pattern mm -hmm. is one, but I found uh, uh, time zones. Uh, uh, various other challenges I have developed, but still I'm I'm moving. For example, I want to go from Seattle to Dallas. For example, how I can go? I can go by flight. I can go. I can go by road. These are all the means. But the end result is that I have to go from Seattle to Dallas. Right. right. So similarly, when you want to do something for organization, the takeaway is that what objectives you have accomplished, what, what you have achieved from the things that you do it, right? That matters. Right, right. Right? 
it it's it's all about uh, what you are doing and it's how you do it right both are in one yep yep i, I hope uh, you i don't know whether you we, i think we are having a very interesting uh, debate <laughs> uh, a very interesting uh, conversation and you are from uh, uh, i think you are from california and i am from uh, seattle currently i am in seattle mm-hmm. uh, but still god has connected all people and we are uh, aligned uh, and sure. we are Uh, we are uh, what is that we are aligning we are aligning the teams people resources mentally and we are getting the productivity and uh, performance and we are getting the results right so i right. think I, i can put it in that way this is the kind of case study i think we are creating from right. this conversation right. you are talking about a case study right and uh, uh, most of the times i was in business then i was in uh, teaching so different areas i entered so i don't have any particular um, way of doing things uh, the strength with me is that i worked in various different areas again my weakness is that i worked only i worked in different areas there is no consistency in my areas sure but there is only one consistency in my life that is waking up morning 4 o'clock sleeping night 10 o'clock that's the one consistency and second consistency is that i am a conscious learner and uh, i am a continuous uh, uh, Mm, i keep i am i'm i'm learning continuously from childhood to till date so like that there are certain things we are consistent certain things are not consistent right so right, it happens right. for every individual it happens for uh, every organization yeah yeah true right? cool okay um i'm i'm conscious of the time oh. um and i need to get off and and uh, get prepared this has been a great conversation um how can people get hold of you Uh, it's very simple uh, uh, i'm i'm available i have four blogs and uh, three youtube channels i'm available on uh, uh, linkedin is a okay. professional network i am always connected with uh, linkedin only uh, and uh, i have some health challenges i think i forgot to tell you i have let me briefly give you my profile uh, I, i'm uh, professor ms rao i have uh, 43 years of diversified experience published 53 books and i am a late bloomer dyslexic adhd ocd add to that the brain stroke uh, ruined my health uh, and i have mental challenges physical challenges and financial challenges and i was born into a toxic family and grew up in a toxic environment i am 61 years old i don't get any pension i don't have any regular income and uh, i i don't have two wheeler i don't have four wheeler i am 61 years old despite all these challenges i rose from the ashes like a phoenix this is briefly about my profile and my right my right my right portion of the body was totally paralyzed now i am recovering for more than 3 and a half years i have problems with the right hand uh, is paralyzed so lots of challenges i am having i am very grateful to uh, bill for giving me this wonderful opportunity i'm grateful to you bill and i really are a fine human being thank you thank, thank you for giving me this opportunity i'm very much yeah. grateful to you and uh, uh, i'm sorry that uh, i'm repeating because of the health challenges i have a brain brain stroke that is a problem not a problem so i'm using a blood thinner regularly and i have to use if i get a uh, 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 brain stroke second time i won't be there on this world forever so i'm taking my own care and i'm Good. grateful to you for this wonderful opportunity and i am available on uh, uh, linkedin linkedin you have to google my name professor m s rao you will find uh, so many things about my soft leadership published 10 books uh, in soft skills alone i am still doing research about uh, uh, soft leadership and, and i am integrating with various areas like brain strains uh, brain science a uh, teams uh, um, uh, employee engagement humanity Uh, emotional intelligence uh, uh ai all these things i am trying to integrate and create something new and uh, discover something new to impact the human kind this is my lifetime vision beautiful thank you um i'll put links to your linkedin profile and youtube and and some of your books in the uh, in the show notes and yeah. please show me please uh, send me the raw video so i will upload yep. on my youtube channel okay. will do Cool. Thank you. I appreciate it. That Thank was you. awesome. Have a great day. You Wonderful too. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye.